welcome to the Seek First CEO podcast, a community for high achieving kingdom women committed to seeking God first and keeping God first in all we do. If you believe you're called to impact the world through your gifts, then you're in the right place. Hi friend, I'm Heather, teacher turned speaker and your host of the Seek First CEO podcast. I'm passionate about helping ambitious servant hearted women find their worth in whose they are, not what they do. As a certified master neuroscience life coach, I help you connect the dots between biblical principles and brain science so you can take your thoughts captive and be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I don't do surface, so we go deep here and we talk about the stuff underneath the surface because I want to help you get to the source of your heart set and mindset roadblocks so you can have breakthrough by aligning your heart and mind with biblical truths. If your heart's desire is to grow in your relationship with Jesus while fearlessly fulfilling your purpose and calling, then let's open up the word together and see what the Holy Spirit has to say about living your life in flow with him. Are you ready? Then get excited for today's episode. Hey friend, I imagine you listen to this podcast because you are an entrepreneur who loves the Lord and who has big God-sized dreams. You might be ambitious, high achieving, all those descriptives that I typically use to describe my woman. There's some other things I know about my girl, you, right? Like my girl who has all these dreams, knows God is a God of the impossible and knows that he has good plans for her. And yet sometimes we can get really disappointed when we're not there yet. The Bible says that God loves loves and wants to take us from glory to glory. And yet the reality is that most of our life is spent in the two phase. We experience something good and then we go for the next thing. And then in that two phase, in that in between to the next level of glory, we can get discouraged. We can get disappointed. If that is you, then this episode is for you. So I love sharing the Israelites journey through the wilderness. Now, sometimes they're not where they wanted to be in the promised land because of their own fault, their own sin, their own bad choices, right? They're grumbling and complaining. And then there are other times that they're not where they wanted to be because God took them the long way. So I want to encourage you that you might be in that middle middle season in the glory to glory, the two phase, because God is teaching you something. And I, I, I did another episode on this. The, 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 the waiting season sometimes is feels really hard. That's not what this episode about. This episode is about you being in your own way. And throughout the last eight years of my journey as an entrepreneur, I've realized that some of the times I wasn't at the next level, I wasn't achieving the goal that I had set out to achieve was because of my own fault. And so that's what today's episode is about. I'm sharing with you five reasons why you might not be where you want to be in your business and what you can do about it. Now we can't out, you know, outperform God's plans. And so that's not what this is about, but this is about us taking ownership for our part and making sure that we are doing what we can in order to prepare for that next level. So I'm going to give you five reasons why you might not be where you want to be. These are all reasons why I have realized I was not where I wanted to be. And these were things I could change. And then I'm going to give you the solution to getting unstuck and getting to that next level. So number one, I recognize that a lot of the times when I make decisions in my business or decisions for really anything in general is that I am oftentimes, or I should say I've, I've got a lot better at this once I really learned that we are made up of three parts. We are made up of our flesh, our body, right? But then we are also have a soul and we also have a spirit and we are supposed to be spirit led. However, when I would allow my flesh and my soul, and your soul, if we like define this even more, I talked about this in the workshop that we did this last week, was your your soul is where your mind, your will, your emotions, your memory is stored. And so oftentimes we can allow our flesh, our earthly desires, and our soul, our logic, our reasoning, our, our mindset, right, to drive our behaviors and our decisions rather than being driven by the Holy Spirit. 
And we know that the Holy Spirit is our advocate, he's our counselor, he is our guide. And so perhaps the reason you're not where you want to be is similar to one of the reasons why I have been stuck. I would get stuck in logic. I would get stuck in my mind trying to make sense of something. And sometimes God asks us to do things that simply does not make sense. But we can justify not doing it because it doesn't make sense. And we don't see how this could come about being a good thing. But I want to encourage you today that when you do the things that God is asking you to do, you are led by your spirit more than your flesh, more than your soul. You will unlock things that you never could have done in your own strength. And so the key to combating you getting stuck in your soul and in your flesh and in your own human nature is to flow number one, Forget logic and operate in wisdom. And I want to say this, logic is not bad. God has given us the ability to use logic and reasoning. That is not a bad thing. However, we can get stuck there. And we get stuck there so much that we stay paralyzed trying to make sense of things. And let me tell you, the closer I get to the Lord and the deeper my relationship with him becomes, the 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 kind of crazier things that he asks me to do that doesn't make sense. God is a God of supernatural. And if we want supernatural success in our business, we have to be willing to do supernatural things. For me, that has looked really different in different seasons in my life. Um, And so I encourage you, if God is asking you to do something, if the Holy Spirit is prompting you to do something that follow that as this is the wisdom of the Lord speaking to me. It doesn't make sense. My family might not understand. My business partner might not understand. My friend, my husband, like certain people might not understand. And that doesn't mean you can't talk about it and explain it, but not not everybody's supposed to understand what the Lord's asking you to do. So don't get stuck in your mind. Don't get stuck in your flesh. Don't get stuck in your logic. And listen to the Holy Spirit and live in flow. All right, that's number one. Number two, seasons of my life, I was fearing people more than I feared the Lord. This is such an interesting topic because obviously we have the immediate responses of people here on earth and like I've, I've thought many times I would love to sit next to the Lord and be able to ask him questions and you know he's he's here to help us but sometimes it doesn't always feel like that so when we fear people whether it's our our the people online um, and so I know that the enemy is using the fear of man to hold back so many of us who have a voice who have a message, who have a solution for a problem that somebody is praying for. And so letting the fear of man, whether it is online, what are they going to think about me for doing that that reel or for doing a podcast or maybe launching this business? Maybe the Lord put a dream in your heart and you are still wrestling with what is my family going to think about this? Come on now. All right. No, we have to think, wait. What does God want me to do? And do I really believe that God is who he says that he is? Do I actually fear him? And this is a reverent fear. This isn't a fear of God being angry and mad at you, trying to catch you in your sin because you are a sinful needier, sinner in need of a savior. Yes, you are sinful. And yes, you are in need of a savior. This is the fear of a perfect, righteous, holy, just, loving father who would never set you up for failure. And so fearing what man believes more than we fear what God believes will keep us stuck and not getting to our final destination. So the key to this is the fear of the Lord. This is flow number two. If you're a note taker, here you go. Flow number two. This is the fear of the Lord. Again, holy, reverent, in awe, fear of God. Fear of the Lord is the origin or the beginning of wisdom. And we need wisdom. The Bible says that. This is a verse, really. It's the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, right? It's the origin. It's where it starts. It's where it comes from. And so I don't know about you, but I need wisdom to run a business. I need wisdom to be a mother. I need wisdom to help coach my clients. I, I need wisdom, You need wisdom. And where does that begin? Well, the Bible tells us it's the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So when we, and by that, 
what that means, we have to know who God is. And not just from a reciting a verse perspective, but from a intimate relationship with him. Think about this. You know, before I met George, uh, I, I moved to Arizona and I knew nobody and I did online dating. You read the profile of a person, right? And you kind of have in your idea, this idea in your head who they're going to be and what they're going to, like all these things, right? And then, I mean, I went on a lot of what I call one and done. They were one and done dates. I would go on the first one and be like, we're done, no more. Um, but I had this idea in my head of who he was. And until I met him in person and built a somewhat of a relationship, had, had a connection, actually had a conversation, spent some time in his presence, then I could really understand who he is. God is the same way. God wants us to spend time in his presence to strengthen our and grow our relationship with him so that we really know who he is, not from a textbook perspective, but from an actual relationship. This is the biggest game changer for me in my walk with the Lord. I used to read the Bible, pray, do certain things as a checklist to be a good enough Christian, to be a good girl. But when I really started to spend intimate time with the Lord and not doing it out of an I have to, I need to, I should, I must, but an I get to, I can, I want to, I choose to, my fear of him became so it's it's a healthy fear. It is a wow, God is actually that good. He is so holy, so perfect, so righteous. So one of the keys to getting unstuck and to get to the next level in your business is actually believing who God is, who he says that he is. The God of the Bible is the same God that is alive and active now. He is the one who is still doing things he wants to continue to do miracles and until Jesus comes God is God is moving and he wants to move in us and through us so the fear of the Lord is the origin of wisdom and we need that all right so that is the second fearing man before you're fearing God or more than you're fearing God and let me just tell you like real quick tip if you are like yes man I am not doing the thing that God asked me to do out of fear of so and so or whatever it may be repent. The R word is like the most beautiful word. I used to think it was such a dirty word and it made me feel like a bad girl, but simply asking for forgiveness. Lord, forgive me for fearing what other people will think of me more than I, I I don't want to disappoint you. I don't, I want to do what you've asked me to do because I trust that there is good stuff ahead. And so simply repent and all repent means is to turn away from. So you turn away from that thought. If you have been stuck in logic and reasoning and in your fleshly desires, like the first reason why I have been stuck in my business and not obeying what the Lord is asking you to do, repent ask for forgiveness that's where the freedom comes that you get to realize man this has been holding me back but God wants me to flow he wants to take me to the next level and all you have to do is recognize the sin recognize the lie you're believing and replace it with God's truth and live in flow all right number three and this is a big one especially for the seek first CEO community It was that I was seeking worldly advice and looking for formulas and methods and strategies from everywhere else before I would seek the Lord on it. Now, let me say, I am a coach. I have programs and I think they are great, obviously, uh, because they have helped me and they're things the Lord has showed me, but you don't need me to help you get unstuck. Now, that is one of the things that I help women do, but the Lord, now the Lord could lead you to me to say, yes, book a call with her, join her programs, whatever that may be. But you don't need me. You need Jesus. And I don't need a strategy and a method and a formula and a a something from somebody else in order to get unstuck or to get to the next level. Now, again, God might lead us to those resources, but we have to remember that God is the source Everything and anyone else is that resource for us. And so seeking the world's advice and opinions and strategies and formulas was keeping me stuck in a circle and just trying to chase the next best thing, trying to chase that shiny object where it was the Lord was saying, Jeremiah 33, 3 is one of my favorite verses, come to me and I will tell you hidden things you do not know. Perhaps there's something you don't know right now in your business or for your personal life that you want to know and you're running to your friend, you're asking somebody else and there's nothing wrong with seeking wise counsel. So don't hear me wrong in this, but what I'm saying is, are you seeking God first 
in this? And are you seeking his kingdom perspective in this? Or are you seeking people? And again, I'm going to say God can use people, but we really, I know for me and what we want to make sure we're doing is seeking him first, giving him first dibs, basically. God, I'm going to give you first dibs to give me whatever you want to show me on this. And of course, that might be leading you to somebody else. But part of the reason I believe that we are not where we want to be is because we are trying to follow formulas and strategies from the world and we are not allowing God to literally allow us to be pioneers. I'm so passionate about this. I've had some really one-off um, good conversations with some uh, just friends about pioneering with the Lord. And I can think of a one conversation. It's the difference between saying you're a pioneer and like walking it out. Walking out, what does it mean to be a pioneer? Well, think about it. A pioneer goes into places and spaces that have never been touched before and they trust that there's, you know, they're, they're going to keep going. We are pioneering spaces and places in the business world that have never been, that people have not gone to that place before. They haven't done it the way that God's asking us to do it. And so the answers are not going to be found in other people. The answers are going to be found in your relationship with the Lord and the Holy Spirit guiding you to it. And so my encouragement to you is how do we combat this problem? It's to follow the Lord over the world. This is flow number three. Follow the Lord over the world. So we want to follow Jesus. We want to seek him first before we seek information or tips or advice or even even seeking confirmation, like anything from the world. We are seeking joy or seeking peace, right? We want to follow the Lord over following the world. And that is a key to getting unstuck so that you can flow. God has your answers. God has everything that you need. So seek him first and he will not disappoint. All right. Number four is that I was doing something that was like faithing it till I made it. So I kind of got over the idea of faking it till I make it because I heard that before. I was like, fake it till you make it. And that didn't really sound right. And so I faithed it until I made it. And I want to encourage you that while I really, really love that, and I used to have an apparel business and one of the shirts said, faith it till you make it because I just love that concept. But what if? What if we didn't have to fake it till we make it? What if we don't even have to faith it until we make it? What if we can show up with confidence and unshakable faith? What if? What if we didn't have to convince ourselves that it was, you know, going to happen? What if we stood in it as if it happened? There is a difference and it starts with your mindset. It starts with what are you actually believing? What are you actually believing about you? And what are you actually believing about God? Because when we are fearful, right? Break that word apart. It means we are full of fear. Well, the opposite of that and the solution to it is flow number four. And that is fearlessly, fearlessly living out the word. Instead of fearfully going after the thing that God has asked us to do. And and instead of like faking it and faithing it until we make it, right, we can show up with confidence and assurance that God has called me here and he promises to complete a work that he began in me. So I am going to fearlessly live this thing out. I have nothing to fear. Fear is of the enemy. Perfect love cast out all fear. I'm going to walk in this knowing that God has me and there are good things ahead. Fearlessly living out the word, F-L-O-W. I am a former teacher, elementary teacher, so I love me some acronyms. And this helps me even remember tools for myself. And so I hope this is speaking to you, these different levels of flow, because I truly believe you were made to flow. And the enemy has been lying to us for far too long about believing what we see, believing what we hear instead of seeing what God sees, hearing what God sees. And this leads me to my last reason why you might be stuck is that you are allowing the F word, fear, false evidence appearing real. 
You are allowing fear, and this is one of the biggest strategies of the enemy, especially against entrepreneurs, to keep you stuck, to keep you paralyzed, to keep you in overwhelm, right? There's all the the, the fruit of fear, and when we, when we buy the lies of the enemy, keeps us fighting, keeps us flighting, and keeps us freezing on our way to success. So what does that look like? Well, for me, fighting my way was in the seasons where I had multiple businesses going, and I was, you know, really passionate about making multiple streams of income because, honestly, at the root of it, I didn't and believe that God was my provider. Now, I'm not saying that God doesn't call people to build multiple streams of income, but what I was saying was I was forcing it to happen so that I could prepare for and plan for and have this abundance. And it wasn't even things God asked me to do. It was, some of them were passions and things that I, and hobbies that I loved doing that I turned into a way to make money. And guess what happened then? It turned, it took the joy out of it. I started not to like it because it became a J-O-B. So for me, that's what fighting looked like, proving my worth proof being my provider not trusting that god actually that i like to say that provision is included in your calling provision is part of the benefits package when god says hey i'm calling you to do this whether that's being a missionary to a foreign country maybe it's being a missionary online like i feel like so many of us are missionaries online that's what we're doing this is what a business tree is it's a business it's a ministry that we get to shine the light of jesus into the interwebs right it, it's it's so cool but if you feel you have to prove that or that you have to be your provider and that maybe your maybe your reel didn't get enough views and you're not going to make your your goal for the month that's fighting rather than trusting and resting and in God and and being there so i i am naturally a fighter I'm going to prove, I'm going to do, I'm going to perform to show that I am worthy and valuable. Um, And so that is a majority of it. But then there was a season in my life where I just ran away from the call. Actually, totally transparent. The Lord asked me to write a book uh, over a year ago, actually a year about right now. And I have been fighting it, kind of like running away from it, from the very thing he's asked me to do. Now, I have intentionally sat down and tried to write the book, but I basically just cried in front of the computer. And then, of course, life happens and things and schedules and kids. And I I don't feel like I have the space to think and write it out. And then what do I write? And then I go back to thinking, well, maybe not that book, maybe this book. I mean, listen, this is how my brain goes. And so I hope somebody's relating to this, but I'm like running away from it literally running away from the thing and I'll keep myself busy doing other things right that are not of God so not all good things are God things and when God's asking us to do something we'll let fear get in the way and fear of what does my book have to say like why would people want to read my book those are just little thoughts that the enemy can totally use against you to do what God's calling you to do So there's the fighting, then there's the flighting and running away. And then there's this last one that I find a lot of women I work with are feeling stuck. They're frozen. They don't know which way to go. And because maybe, you know, for me and for a lot of women I I work with, this is what it looks like. Well, I don't know all the steps, so I'm just going to stay here until God gives me the full plan. And I'm going to stay stuck and frozen in this place because I don't know if I'm hearing from God or I don't know what the next step is or I don't know, I don't have the full picture and I'm, I'm going to buy another course and I'm going to buy another this and I'm going to consume this and I'm going to read another book. And so they stay stuck and frozen in one place, really busy, but making no progress. You are not meant to struggle your way to success. That is not how God designed it. Now, are there times where it might feel like right? God's refining you and there's a process. Yes, but it wasn't meant to be a struggle. It wasn't meant to really show you God's strength through you. And so a lot of that's going to take surrendering. And so the fifth principle of living in flow and overcoming these things so that you can get unstuck, get to the next level is not only to fearlessly live out the word, but then it's when things aren't going your way or maybe when you don't see the things happening and you know, maybe you get discouraged and you think maybe I didn't hear God's voice right. I don't know. All the questions that I have come up with, that the women I work with come up with, it's to faithfully live out the word. And these last two are so important and why I'm so passionate about pointing women back to God's word because and pointing women back to Jesus in general. If we're not in the word of God, we certainly won't know what that means to fearlessly live it out or to faithfully live it out. 
because faith is in the unseen and that next level that God wants to take you to. Well, there's a reason why you don't, you're not there yet, right? Because you haven't experienced it yet. And so faith is in the things that you haven't experienced it. Hope, right? God wants you to continue to have hope and faith that what I said is where I'm taking you. You you get to faithfully walk this thing out with me, trusting I'm going to get you there. I'm going to get you to the promised land, this next level. And so we get to forget logic, not get stuck in our minds and allow our brains to keep us stuck. We get to allow ourselves to be led by the spirit of the living God. We also get to choose to fear the Lord in a healthy way so that we also have more wisdom to know what to do, when to do it, how to do it, giving us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to obey. And then we get to listen to all the things the world has to say and say, yep, but God's God's leading me here. And so I'm going to follow what God says over following what the world says, and I'm going to follow him. And then I'm going to fearlessly and faithfully live out the word of God, which means I am in the word of God regularly on a daily basis so that I can know what it says and I can take action on it and I can make it come alive in me. And so listen, reading the Bible is not just to gain a bunch of information. Reading the Bible is meant so that you have revelation and then that revelation, it naturally is going to make you have transformation. And isn't that the whole walk of a believer is transforming not only our minds, but our hearts and our lives to be more like Jesus. And so those are the five principles of living in flow. I hope this blessed you. I wanted to share this episode because the Made to Flow Academy, it is tying biblical principles that I talked with you today and really tying the brain science. I have a master in neuroscience coaching certification and I help you see how the Bible can mesh with what science shows us about the brain. And really science is simply confirming what God already said in his word, like taking your thoughts captive and making them obedient to Christ and being transformed transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you have been feeling stuck, overwhelmed, burnt out, and you're like, man, I'm not where I want to be, but I can't figure out what's wrong with me. Those are the questions I ask God, like what's wrong with me? I would love to invite you to join the Made to Flow Academy. It is a four month coaching program that ties biblical principles and brain science to help you allow your brain to work for you and not against you. Allow you to be proactive in your thought life rather than reactive and you make 80 to 90 percent of your decisions based off of your subconscious beliefs made to flow academy helps you get to those things so that you can make sure your subconscious and your heart are speaking truth which is written in god's word so i'm going to leave the link in the show notes this is the last made to flow academy of 2022 we will not be opening the doors again until 2023 so if you are like i want to get to the root of this why i'm where i'm at and what's key keeping me feeling this way, then I want to join uh, invite you to join us in the Made to Flow Academy. I hope this episode blessed you and that no matter what, you choose to get unstuck and flow with the Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you for this content. Lord, I thank you through my own life of recognizing my behavioral patterns of fighting, flighting, and freezing. That Holy Spirit, you drop this nugget in my spirit that I get to share with other women now that they get to choose to flow. We don't have to fight our way to success. We don't have to run away from the very thing that you called us to do. And we do not have to stay stuck and paralyzed and frozen. We get to flow with you. And Holy Spirit, we thank you for being our guide. We thank you for doing life with us. So God, this episode, I hope it gets the uh, listener unstuck so that she can continue to move forward in the calling that you have on her life. Lord, it's all for your glory, all for your honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 